Hello, hello, hello. Caught me a bit unawares. Excuse that. I'm just should have marked up earlier. And I got distracted looking at something for one of my clients. So I'm really, really glad to see you today and thank you for joining me. Now today's topic is an important topic because we always talk about how do or we need to get in front of our clients. We need to get our potential clients' attention. And we don't always go into a great deal of detail about how to do so. So I'm hoping that I'm going to give you some really useful and practical strategies and simple strategies. I'm not going to try and overcomplicate things. I'm going to try and give you some really useful strategies to implement and um, that you can implement immediately. Now, um, there's a saying in print publishing that um, if it doesn't bleed, it doesn't lead. And basically what this means is that... Um, People are always uh, attracted to anything that is sensational, uh, violence, gore, blood is another huge attraction, but anything that is sensational or dramatic is immediately going to attract people's attention. And in print media, this is what um, they believe sells their publications. Just want to quickly say hi to Irina, and I hope you've had a chance to catch up on all the videos. Not that there were that many, I'm being a bit slack at the moment, that were done um, while you were on your lovely holiday. And I saw just briefly somebody else popped in, and if you do pop back on, won't you just uh, send me a hello and a wave so that I know who you are. Uh, thanks for joining me. So I'm not advocating including blood and gore into um, anything that you use to market yourself or post on social media. Hi Sharon, I was thinking about you just earlier and wondering if you were using your books for inspiration for your marketing. So um, I'm not advocating any of this, but I do want to share with you what, um, how neuroscience and neuromarketing tells us about how we get other people's attention. So first, just quickly bear with me, my name is Megan Hudson, I'm a business and marketing coach and I specialize in working with coaches to help you find and define your niche and to get clear on your marketing message so that you can accelerate your marketing and sales. And I'm really hoping that what I'm going to be talking about today is going to be a bit of a game changer for you. So one of our big, oh Sharon, you posted something just now, I'm going to go and visit and I'll like it. Awesome, well done. So one of our biggest challenges, of course, is getting attention, getting the attention of the right people and getting in front of our ideal clients. Coaching is such an over-commoditized and overcrowded industry. And I'm sorry to land you with a couple of truth bombs, but um, I did a search just now um, on LinkedIn, and uh, I started off searching under the term coach, and I came up with 6,570,000 results. I then narrowed it down to life coach, came up with 1,450,000 results. These are people who are listing themselves on LinkedIn, which is one of the, after word of mouth referrals, it's one of the primary ways that um, people find coaches, um, quickly followed by our websites. Um, but this is how many people are listing themselves as coaches on LinkedIn. Business coaches, 3.2 million, and executive coach, 1.34, 1,340,000. So, there are lots of coaches out there, and um, I don't have my numbers. I think I, I looked at the beginning of this year or towards the end of last year uh, at the numbers on LinkedIn, and they'd already dramatically climbed from the previous year. Um, so, there is just an incremental increase of people coming into this market. But what it tells us is that, yes, we've got a whole lot of competition out there, and many of our competitors are marketing up a storm. But we have to, have to, have to get, our, get some skin in the game and actually put ourselves out there so that we can also rise above the noise, rise above the online clutter and get attention. I think it was about two weeks 
ago, I did a training on if you don't have something to say, uh, just giving you a couple of tips on, on what you can do. And if this sounds like if you're sitting there and thinking, um, you know, mm, I don't quite know what to put out there, then do go back and watch that video because it's got a couple of useful tips. Um, but Sharon and Irina, you are both doing sterling, sterling jobs. Really impressed. Um, Irina, you've like done some amazing stuff. I'm like, going to take some, some uh, lessons from you. So neuroscience tells us that successful and sustainable brands do three things. They get attention, they are memorable, become memorable, so they maintain attention, and they engage emotions. So how do we get people's attention in the first place so that we can become memorable and then engage their emotions? So here are a couple of things, again, that neuroscience tells us that gets people's attention. Firstly, color and contrast. Secondly, luminescence or brightness. Third, orientation, size, and these are in no particular order. Size, shape, movement, faces, texture. Oh my goodness, sorry, that's my husband phoning and I didn't put my phone on silent, which I should have done. So it's size, shape, movement, faces, text, and novelty. And then also using your potential customer's name. So you know when you receive those emails that are personalized and they say, hi, Megan, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's just another way of uh, making sure that we get our potential clients' names. Now I'm going to address the really, really easy ones first. So um, the first one I want to look at is color and con contrast. And there was a, um, a fabulous uh, bit of research done using uh, eye tracking movement technology on some uh, different versions of Coca-Cola bottles. So the one was um, just a normal bottle that had the um, the, the like red a, a red wrap around and then the white Coca-Cola logo across it. It was a, another version, and then there was a third version where they'd done a black wrap around with the white Coca-Cola logo over it. And overwhelmingly, people's eyes were attracted to the black and white one because that offered the most contrast. So I'm not advocating that we just stick to black and white in everything that we do, but it's an indication or the, the rule that you need to stick to is how can I create the greatest amount of contrast so that people can very clearly and easily see how I'm showing up. You know, I've got a client who's got the most fantastic um, corporate brand color palettes. So it ranges from everything from a really bright orange, and I, I'm going to um, admit that I'm not a fan of orange, but it's really bright orange to a brick red, she's got sunshine yellow and air force blue, and then a, a much kind of um, softer khaki green color. And when we first started working together, um, the first thing we did was to create quite um, clearly branded, um, you know, headers and identities for um, the different things that she was putting out into uh, the public arena, into social media, on her website. We really, really got clear and deliberate um, and, and bold in, in how we were using her branding and her colors. And you know, within a, only a couple of months, she was getting comments and emails from people she's been dealing with for years, commenting on how distinctly she was showing up, how clearly she was showing up and how noticeable her branding was. And the first year that we worked together, she had her most profitable and successful year. And this year, she's actually on her way to exceeding what she did last year. So I can't put it all down to the work that we've done on her branding, but it's certainly using color is one of the quickest and easiest ways of making people um, sit up and pay attention. And I can even speak from firsthand experience when um, in 2019, I completely rebranded my business. I um, chose uh, a whole new 
new color palette and very quickly I had people contacting me and the feedback was overwhelming about how noticeable um, my my branding and coloring was um, and how you know because of the consistency people were starting to really associate certain things with me so color works deliberately choosing um, colors um, and using them on an ongoing basis works um, and if you don't yet have a brand palette just google color pickers um, online there are lots of free tools um, I use one called uh, coolers.co I think I always spell it wrong it's c-o-o-l-o-r-s dot c-o and the nice thing about that is that if you currently have two corporate colors um, it allows you to put them in and then to choose up to three more uh, complementary colors, colors that will really, really work well with your original two corporate colors because most of us have got like maybe two colors or more in our logos and you might want to just add a couple of highlighting colors in um, that you can use to really bump up and, and you know, create attention. So, um, as I was saying, the greater the contrast and the use, the consistent use of color, um, the more attention something gets. So I've got a little story here, a personal story. If we think back to our days when we were kind of, you know, prehistoric and roaming the savannah, we looked for contrast and movement. Um, I'm starting to segue into movement now, but we we um, we noted color, we noted contrast, we noted movement in in the savannah. Contrast showed us immediately that there was something worth paying attention to. So contrast might have been um, flowers blooming so that we knew that there was going to be fruit, um, edible fruit at some stage in the future. Contrast could even have been um, a, a black and white zebra, um, you know, in between the, you know, showing in between the grass and looking at the zebra st stripes. But one way or another, contrast and color were great signals to us around um, whether or not something was, was potentially going to be beneficial or otherwise whether we should turn around and run. And I'll never forget, many years ago, I was hiking with some friends in a game reserve and it was my birthday. So um, this hike was part of the birthday celebrations. And we'd gone up to this beautiful lookout point that gave us this incredible view over most of the, the nature reserve and had a great time there, you know, bird watching and spotting the wildlife. Anyway, we were quite a distance from our vehicle and on the way back, we were all merrily tramping through the grass, chatting away and making plenty of noise and everything when one of the guys noticed something not far away from us. The first thing he saw was what looked like huge dark rocks in the tall grass up ahead. And what was unusual about this was that in this particular area, the soil and the ground was sort of a light brown or golden color. You didn't get dark rocks in this area. They were not the norm and that's why they stood out. So we all stopped walking and held our breath these rocks, rocks, were only about 20 meters ahead of us. I'll never forget this. And we crouched down in the tall grass. And the next thing, on top of one of these rocks, we saw what looked like a little bird twitching. And we kind of stared closer and closer, straining our eyes, looking through the binoculars. And oh my God, it was a herd of white rhino that had settled down in the path that we needed to take to get back to our car. I cannot describe how my knees turned to jelly. I was shaking from top to toe and I honestly thought that this was going to be the last birthday that I would ever celebrate in my life. I was looking around me frantically to try and find a really tall, um, decent tree to climb just to um, try and get to safety. And there was nothing, nothing. I couldn't breathe. And we must have obviously, they must have heard us coming because after a little while they all got up 
and um, it was a family group with some babies, which is the worst possible scenario because it just brings out the worst in rhino moms. Like they really become fierce and aggressive in protecting their young. But to cut a long story short, they got up, they moved off down the track. Um, they would then sort of, you know, uh, stand still and graze for a while. We kind of quietly keeping quite a bit of distance crept along behind them. And bit by bit, they went further and further down the track and eventually they took off on another one of the um, animal paths and we were able to make our way very tentatively to the safety of our vehicle or the relative safety of our vehicle. But the story demonstrates how we are designed to recognize color, contrast and movement. So let me go on to movement. We all know that the social media platforms are trying to push us more and more to creating engagement through movement. Facebook, Instagram, all of the social media platforms, the algorithms have been tweaked and designed to prioritize video content. And in fact, Facebook had a huge um, new uh, briefing to the industry uh, earlier this week. I still need to catch up on all of the developments, but you can expect major changes and major developments happening on the Facebook and Instagram platforms. So whether you use the opportunity to do live videos like I'm doing now, you might record videos on your, um, on your phone, uh, privately without being live and then you know upload when you're eventually satisfied with what you do upload that onto social media channels um, another uh, piece of software I use to create the videos for um, my online course is called loom you can even um, record videos on zoom and then just upload the mp4 files onto your social different social media platforms but for those of you who aren't comfortable showing your faces in front of a camera, and I know it took me a long time, firstly, Facebook gives you some amazing filters to play with, okay? So you can smooth out, you can make yourself look 10 years younger. If you don't have any makeup on, there are filters that you can use that will um, make you look as though you're wearing lipstick and um, you know uh, that, that your eyes are made up. Um, there are other filters that do great things and I'm going to talk about it just now but um, that have like little you know um, beams of light coming out. You can do all sorts of things with the Facebook filters to try and make yourself feel a little bit more comfortable. I mean there were even like some lovely Halloween masks that you could use recently. But if you're not comfortable going in front of the camera, one of the things that you can do is create a presentation in PowerPoint and you can just record your voice talking to the presentation and flipping through the, the, um, the different slides. Um, it means that you are still creating something that has movements that can attract people's eyes, something that is um, giving away valuable information, but you're not uh, having that ultimate vulnerability in um, being personally visible. So, but another question I ask is if you tell me you're not comfortable, now put your hand up or give me an emoji if you aren't comfortable going live. Irina, I know you are um, going live more and more and I take my hat off to you and I think that you'll agree with me that the more you do it, the it kind of the more comfortable you get and the easier it becomes. But let me know if you are not comfortable going live. Is that Karina? Hello, I haven't seen you for ages. Karina used to live in my neighborhood and she's now on the sunny south coast. Okay, so Sharon, thank you. You're not comfortable showing your face going live. How many online Zoom meetings have you been in? How many? Think about it. Because if you are appearing in online Zoom meetings, Microsoft team meetings, you've actually been live on camera. You know, and there are some of them, uh, Karina, you also don't like 
um, being live, Sharon, you've been online a lot, you've been on camera, you know, and sometimes we're not uh, dolled up, you know, as much as we might want to be, um, but in order to participate, the research shows that if you um, actually have your camera on rather than um, turn video off on online meetings, you're much more engaged with what is going on. And you know what? Everybody's probably not looking at you. <laughs> They're probably looking at themselves and, and fretting about how they look. But let me, so you guys have all now been, you've admitted that you've been on in front of a camera. If you're not comfortable, here are a couple of suggestions. How would you feel if you perhaps recorded a Zoom interview with somebody else where the responsibility didn't rest entirely on your shoulders to contribute towards the conversation and to um, create the content? And if that sounds doable for you, then start thinking about people in your network whose work complements the kind of work that you do. Um, if you were to interview them, it would be interesting and valuable for your potential clients and somebody that you've got a good relationship with. Um, you know, it, it, it's always wonderful to showcase somebody else because remember, what they're going to do is they're going to share, they are going to share your interview on their social media as well. So you'll get exposed to people that you wouldn't normally get exposed to. And amongst those people could be an ideal client of yours. And it's you're getting the credibility of being associated with that person. So give some thought to that. It might just make you feel a little bit more comfortable if you've got company online. And if any of you would like to interview me, just send me a direct message and um, uh, we can set something up. Arena, you've got to go. You'll catch the last bit later. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And Arena also says, it's so funny, she, she can do a live but not a cold call. Oh, you know what? I mean, you and me both. <laughs> cold calls, I think, are everybody else's nightmare. And this is why we need to really work on having a referral strategy so that we can um, come in warm rather than um, making cold calls. But it's not always possible. And brave you for making cold calls if you are doing that. So I've already spoken about um, the other option, if you feel uncomfortable in front of the camera, is creating a presentation that you can talk over and then you can upload that onto social media. Again, um, you're flipping through the, the slides, so um, you are um, creating a sense of movement and it's more eye-catching than just having you know something static. And the more you do these things, the more confident you'll become. And in both of the options that I've given you, you can create luminescence. So um, luminescence refers to something that is bright and eye-catching. Um, I've spoken about how you can use filters on Facebook and I don't know if I'm able to change, let me see if I can change the filter while I'm, oh, I don't want to mess with the, oh, well, you can actually. So, I'm going to change to another filter. <laughs> so there you can see an example of um, another filter being applied. So I'm going to take it off, go back to normal. But that's just a, a, a quick demonstration of what I'm talking about, one example of luminescence. But another trend that I have noticed over the last couple of years is that a lot of people are using the color gold or some shade of um, gold in their logos and in their corporate colors. And what this then allows them to do is um, to very comfortably accessorize or to put um, gold colored ornaments in the background when, when they are doing videos and things um, because the luminescence, the brightness, the sparkle catches our eye and we know sparkles do catch our eyes. If you see something glinting in the light when you're walking along the pavement, um, it will attract your attention. So that's 
um, four things, okay? We've spoken about colors, we've spoken about contrast, we've spoken about movement, and we've spoken about luminescence. Another thing that's really important to do is allowing your potential clients to see your face. That gets, we know that showing your own face gets more attention than just having a uh, text or, um, a, you know, a, a picture of, of nothing at all. And I've said so many times that one of the best investments you will ever make in your business is to have a professional photo shoot. In fact, I would go as far to say if you have limited funds and you have to choose between creating a website and spending money on a photo shoot, I would advise you to spend the money on that photo shoot because it will allow you to create an attention getting presence on social media and there are many, many, many coaches and businesses out there who are successful it, despite the fact that they don't have a website. Yes, a website is important, but I definitely would put my money into a professional photo shoot first and you can get away with not having a website for quite some time. Now, let's see how, if you implement any of these things, what you want to do is maybe just choose one of the, the four things that I've mentioned. So I've spoken about colors, I've spoken about contrast, uh, sorry, the five things I've mentioned. Colors, contrast, luminescence, movement, or showing your face. And implement one of them and see what kind of a response you start to get on your, um, you know, when you are marketing yourself. So on social media, um, you know, even yeah, in your emails, use a distinctive um, font and perhaps use color within your emails to highlight certain important points. And don't give up. It takes time to get attention, to retain attention, and then to get traction. In fact, um, I was very, uh, not embarrassed, but I've been a little bit quiet on social media recently and I got an email today from somebody that I follow and I've actually done a couple of her courses and in the email I feel like it was written especially for me she said that if you have a gap or a hiatus in your online presence you may as well start from scratch remember that it's got to be our golden rule and I'm going to set an example for you you may as well start from scratch if you're not being regular it's quite horrific to think of it like that and you will become more memorable if you are consistent so make it part of your ritual or habit and even if you just do once a week get regular you get rewarded by the algorithms for being consistent and regular, even if it's just once a week. But I do want to try and encourage you to um, show up a little bit more often than that. I can see somebody else has just joined us, and I can't tell who it is. Won't you pop a hello in the comments so that um, I can see who you are? Thank you very much for hopping on. But going back to my story about the rhino earlier, did you kind of feel my fear or anxiety? Did you get caught up in the story or were you able to kind of put yourself into my shoes? Do you remember what I said right at the beginning of this video? Neuromarketing and neuroscience tell us that successful and sustainable brands do three things without fail. They get attention, and I've just given you a whole lot of tips on how to get attention today. They retain and maintain that attention by becoming memorable, and they engage emotions. So telling stories, like the story that I told about the rhino, it not only demonstrated some of the principles that I wanted to share with you today, but it also hopefully engaged your emotions, and you felt the suspense and the tension. 
to use stories to engage and to become memorable. People will associate you with certain stories. I hope this has been practical and useful. Please won't you tell me in the comments what you are going to implement immediately. So remember it was creating a, a palette of distinctive brand colors. Um, making sure that you have the maximum contrast in um, anything visual that you are putting out into social media or the online space. Using things like um, uh, gold, shiny or bright colors, luminescence, um, you know, things that um, sparkle and, and catch people's eyes, um, you know, using brightness. Um, uh, what other, using movement, so starting to consider going to video, and finally showing your face, even in still photography. Tell me which one of those you are going to implement. Let me see if there's anyone making a comment. Nothing yet. I know there's a bit of a delay with Facebook. So I'll just give you one or two more seconds. Anybody going to tell me? Ah, oh, I can see we're just down to one person. Well, that's it for today. Karina, thank you for staying on until the end. Arena, when you come back, I hope that you get more value out of this. Sharon, have you popped just on? And I don't, ah, oh, Sharon, you're going to try and do video. Good for you. Good for you. Um, and so... I'm going to ask now, so which of my suggestions did you like the most? Like making a, a PowerPoint presentation or doing a live video or creating a video quietly in the background and when you're happy with it, uploading it. So first is PowerPoint presentation. Second is doing a live video. Number two, so give me a one, two or three for um, whether or not you are going to record a video and when and if you're happy with it you're going to upload it i think you've disappeared and dropped off again i can see karina still there karina what are you oh sharon you're back on one two or three karina what are you going to do okay sharon so that's record a video and upload Please tag me when you upload the video so that it comes up in my um, notifications and I will make sure to um, go and have a look and I will get in contact with you behind the scenes and tell you what I thought about it. But well done, that's really, really courageous and I'm looking forward to seeing that video. Karina, photo shoot, absolutely. Now, Karina actually um, specializes in... I'm going to say decoding faces. So she would, um, she can have a look at somebody's face and tell a whole lot of personality characteristics from um, how our faces look. And she teaches other people how to do exactly the same. I went on one of her courses years ago. It was so interesting. So, um, Karina, you know what? You work with faces. You need to walk the talk, doll. <laughs> and you can even use your face pattern recognition, that's what it is. And you can even use your own face from the photo shoot to demonstrate the things that you are teaching other people. Sharon, I'm so glad that you have set yourself a goal to do it before the end of the year. Good for you. We, you've said it in public now, so we can all hold you accountable. And um, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. It's been so much fun. I'm really proud of you guys, and I look forward forward to seeing the outcome and results. Cool. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Ciao for now.